is circling around me recently. And it is that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So choose wisely, right? So then I started thinking about my friends and the people that are around me. And then I was like, wow, I have such amazing people that do amazing things with their life. Why not interview them and share all of their cool stuff that they're up to uh, with you guys too? So today I actually have a long time friend with me. Um, let me show you her picture. I'm sure you'll recognize her. <laughs> Maddie. Hi. Maddie. Oh, I'm like taking off my sweater. It's Hi. all good. <laughs> so Maddie and I actually did stick it 10 years ago. Or maybe it's even longer than that That's now. Crazy. I know. We played best friends. And that was actually you first coming out here, right? My first time in LA. Yep. You were one of the first friends I made. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're so lucky to have been able to stay friends because, you know, in the industry, a lot of times people come in and out of your lives. But So many. So yeah. many have moved. But we, yeah, we've been able to keep up with each other. And if you didn't know, we actually have a movie that is on Netflix called Chalk It Up that Maddie mm -hmm. wrote, she produced, and she starred in. And I also yeah. get to you. I get to play her best friend again. Um, so that's actually one of the things that we are going to talk about later on. But first, I want to talk about something that, I mean, Maddie is freaking amazing. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure some of you follow her, but she has been amazing since she was little, and she continues <laughs> to be amazing uh, even to now. So she actually was a college gymnast. And, you know, I just... I mean, I when we trained for Stick It, we were in a gym with eight-year-olds, and they were like elite gymnasts trying to go to the Olympics, and I just couldn't believe the things that they had to go through. Like, they were literally in the gym with us for six hours every single day, doing school there, and like watching their diet, and there's so much that involves in uh, in being, being a gymnast, and especially making it all the way to being... Uh, a college gymnast. Yeah. So I guess my first question for you was what is one of the most important lessons that you learned from gymnastics or being a gymnast? Um, I really think it was uh, just like the persistence it takes because one thing about gymnastics is that it's really hard to get a skill. So like one of the basics of gymnastics is called a kip, a glide kip. And we used to get a trophy when you'd get one. And in most people would take like three years to get their first kip. And I think without having that knowledge, there's no way I would have lasted this long in Los Angeles, like pursuing acting and writing because I just know, hey, it took that long to get one skill to make a career. It's going to take that long as well. So I would say it's just persistence and it's hard, but it's been great in the long run. That's a, yeah, that's actually really awesome that it did carry over into acting, especially such a crazy career like that. Um, what would you say is like a habit or routine that you still implement into your life today? Well, certainly working out. I, um, I have a strange love of competition as well. And so every time I feel like I actually try to stop competing, I never do. So like when I was done with gymnastics, then we did the movie stick it together. And then after that, I was like not competing. And then I remember I found swing dancing and of course I couldn't just do swing dancing leisurely. I had to compete in it. And yeah. then after I found swing dancing, I found CrossFit and can I just do CrossFit? No, I have to compete in it. And even <laughs> with right, even with writing, like we were like, Oh, we're writing this and that. And I was like, we should enter competitions. And like, <laughs> then we enter competitions for writing. And I'm like, there's something sick about this, like love of competition. And that's definitely a habit that I've carried out, which is why I think like as an actor, you sort of like are competing, but you're also not because you're always rooting for everyone and your friends too, you know, right. but like someone does get the part and someone doesn't. And so it's never like that tragic when I don't or I do because I'm so used to winning, losing, and, and that balance being there. Hmm. Oh, 
Well, we have some people saying hi here. I'll show them to you. Yay. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> people saying hello. Um, what was your goal in regard to gymnastics? Like, were you planning to go to the Olympics or what, what did you want out of that? I always wanted to go to the Olympics. I remember being like, I would never get a tattoo unless I went to the Olympics. And then I would get the Olympic rings, <laughs> which is why to this day, I do not have a tattoo. So I didn't go. But yeah, that's all I ever wanted. I wanted to go to the Olympics. I didn't even think about college gymnastics, to be honest. It was just Olympics, Olympics, Olympics. And I remember begging my coaches to go elite. And they would always be like, it's different. You won't like it. And I was like, please, I just, I want to go so bad. And yeah. I remember finally they let me go elite. And then I ended up winning elite nationals. And, and then I was wow. going to college the next year. And I was still kind of bummed I never got to do international elite, which is like the level that Olympians go. But yeah. I also like was very self-aware that I was not good enough on vault. I'd say I was probably good enough on um, floor and beam, but also not on bars. So, but that was the goal. But then when I got sticky it was like all those dreams of olympics sort of came true through the virtual world right it nice. it's probably yeah. even more exciting you should get a stick it uh a tattoo i know right I, it's it's true and gymnastics has just been obviously so awesome in my life if you could go back and like just using the life lessons that you've learned now if you could go back whether it be about training or your mentality what would you have done differently as a gymnast or yeah. just in life in general? As I a guess gymnast, in, life in general could work too. I think I'll, well, I'll start with as a gymnast. I was really superstitious and hmm. like everything had to be the same. Every meet, I had to wear the same wristbands and like this and that. And I had to like bet a quarter. I had a thing with my coach where I would bet a quarter that I would keep my legs straight and my legs together on the bar routine. But if it didn't, I would be like worried. And I remember like in college, I decided I was going to break every superstition and see what happened. And it was like, I still did fine. So I wish I could tell my younger self, like, you've got to stop all these stupid superstitions. Like they're not going to make or break you. Like sometimes you're going to have good needs. Sometimes you won't. And it doesn't have to do with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Michael said, will you ever make another movie together? Absolutely. If not a movie, I'm hoping Right now I'm writing the TV show, so I'd rather have Nikki on that TV show because then we could have like eight seasons <laughs> together. <laughs> that would be freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. But I'm also working on a Christmas movie, and I have a feeling there'd always be a part for Nikki in every movie that I write. I think it's good. That that's what works out perfectly for me. <laughs> yeah. And I saw someone also wrote, now that the college or the elite scoring has changed, college oh, yeah. is better. And I totally agree. John. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, college yeah, it's gym. more fun to watch. We don't have the perfect 10 anymore. And that was one of the best parts of gymnastics. Oh, wait. How is it different? I don't even know. Well, now, like, you could fall and still win because if you have enough bonus and your skills are hard enough, then that's why you win. And it's, it kind of sucks because it takes out that element of being precise and precision that's so yeah. hard, which is honestly, when I won elite nationals, that's why I won because everyone else fell and I didn't, I didn't have the hardest routines. Oh. Just, I was really, really consistent that day, which I think is a huge part of gymnastics that they're yeah, losing. Yeah. yeah. Ricardo has a cool question. He says, what's your life's favorite memory? Uh, it's sadly, not sadly, or maybe wonderfully really stick. It was one of my life's favorite memory. I mean, I, Moved to L.A. I was a seventh grade English teacher at the time, making very little money. And then I booked this huge, crazy job in Los Angeles and eat Nikki. And yeah. <laughs> I'm working with Jeff Bridges, an Oscar winner, who's asking me questions about, like, what would a gymnastics coach do here? And I'm like, this is crazy. And living yeah. out all my gymnastics dreams. So that would definitely be one of the coolest life memories I've ever had. You see Art's comment. He says he would like uh, to see us in a movie where we're kicking butt as like a spy. I guess I kind of played a spy, a CIA agent in Chalk It Up. That's true. We need to see yeah. you actually like be the spy, right? Like <laughs> right, now that you right. got you got I into the CIA. Chalk, chalk It Up too, where yeah. we see Nikki in her spy world. That's right. Oh, actually, that sounds so fun. I actually love that idea. Get to That's write a good it. one. Yeah. <laughs> no, right? 
I've always wanted to write a spy movie, I think because I studied abroad in Russia and I studied international studies and, um, and ever since then I've been like, I need to write like a cool spy movie that centers around Russia and stuff. I studied it for many years. I studied abroad twice in Moscow. <laughs> okay. There you go. Now, now you definitely. And my boyfriend is Russian, so there oh, you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. So opposite. I have, I have Pepper here. That's who I keep messing. Oh, with. I love Pepper. Wait, we got to make a big screen on Pepper. Hi, Pepper. <laughs> Hi, Pepper. Hi. Can you say hello to everybody? Because you're the <laughs> little puppy ever. Oh. So she's in my oh, lap. So that's who I keep messing with. It's all good. Okay, so opposite to that of your best life moment, what is one of the hardest struggles you went through and how did you overcome it? That was definitely teaching seventh grade. Um, <laughs> it was hard because I was 22 and I looked like a seventh grader at the time. Hmm. And it was just hard because I don't know if everybody remembers back to seventh grade, but you're, you're very emotional. Every day is different. Like some days the kids were my best friends and some days they hated me. And I would just go home and call my mom. And I was like living in this super small town because I did um, Teach for America where they send you where no one else wants to coach or coach to teach. And I just remember being like, this is so hard every time. And it wasn't my life's passion either, but the kids were great. And I still have connections with some of them on Facebook, but it was the hardest time. And how I got through it was I was still training. Um, and I was praying a lot, to be honest. I was like, every morning and just be like, God, please take me out of this into something really awesome, which then he gave me stick it at the end of my year of teaching. So it was great. Wow. That's yeah, that is awesome. I believe in that though. I believe that like what you put out into the universe and whether it's praying, whether it's uh, wishing or manifesting, whatever people call yeah. it, I, I feel like, it's nice. There's got to be something bigger than you to believe in. I just really yeah. think you need but to have that. No for what, you're putting out that energy towards your dreams and your goals. So whoever is responding to it, you know, like whether and people, it's or, yeah, or, and people or, respect that. Yep. People I mean, love that. people are attracted it, to people that are like them. So, you know, that's a big thing about like people with great energy. Like if you want to attract great people around you, then you have to emanate that same sense of energy and positivity and love that you want back in them. And yep. Matt, Matty does a great job of that. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You that's too. The reason oh my gosh. Been friends for so long cuz she's I know, always I know. So sweet and positive even though she has muscles that could make any guy go, oh, my God, she can beat me at so many things. Like, uh, like at the CrossFit Open, actually. That we was just cool. Both. I did it for the first time ever. Yay. <laughs> um, I did it for the eighth it, time. Yeah. You didn't know. Maddie uh, has gone to the CrossFit Games, which is pretty freaking amazing since we're here in SoCal, which is one of the hardest regions to be a part of. And yeah. she got to compete. We saw her on TV. And it was the coolest <laughs> thing ever. And I was like, wow, that's my friend. That's so cool. <laughs> it's just so yeah. awesome. I mean, that's like being at the top of the top in CrossFit, you know? Um, yeah. I Okay, so I have some CrossFit questions. Go for it. Because let me tell you, when I tried to do that open, I was like, I'm glad I did it, but never again. Because <laughs> that was I think that I think that every year. Every year I say I'm not going to do the open. Every year I do it. <laughs> so, okay. So for me, like right before you know you're going to have to do this really hard workout, what do you tell yourself to like get yourself in the game? You know, to like actually. No, that's such a good question. And every year it's really hard for me because I'm, like I said, I'm super competitive. I'm really hard on myself. And, um, I actually did visualizations. My friend Heidi would record visualizations through um, her gym Invictus, and I would get those, oh. and I would listen to them beforehand. And that helped me a ton because I'm so hard on myself. And I will say, like, there were some workouts that I, like, cried for an hour after because I was disappointed in my performance, and then I, like, went and redid them. I get real nervous. Actually, we taped every video, so it would be funny to watch the videos and watch me beforehand because I'm really nervous. And I go one of two directions. I get really quiet and introverted before I go, or mm -hmm. I'm like 
a manic talker because I'm like, blah, 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 we're gonna do the workout. Blah. Like, there's no. So you don't like to- listen to a song and and that gets you pumped every time. No, but I do like to play, and don't make fun of me, but on Pandora, I like to play fight song radio, and, yes. <laughs> and that's my fight song. Yes. <laughs> when, that co- when that comes on, I'm like, yeah. Like, and when I was on the rower for the 55 calories of rowing, I was yeah. like, change the song. It's not good enough. Like, I listen to the music the whole time to take me out of that place of pain. Right. So, yeah. I like that they want you to be the new ghost in the shell. I'm down with that. I know that would be awesome. I know. Oh, I would have loved to have been a Power Ranger. We couldn't audition for that because at the time it was like non-union. Ah, uh, yeah. I remember I was. I asked my agents if I could audition for Power Rangers, and they said, "Nope, hmm. nope." Unfortunately, yep. So, how did it feel the first time, like, or like when you realized you were getting to go to the games? Like, what was that victory feeling? Like, what went through your head and? Yeah, man, it was unbelievable. It was such a cool thing. One, we were in third. So it was we were the last place that got to make it. And it all came down to this very last workout. And we were so far ahead. We were in first going into this last workout. And then one of our teammates actually couldn't lift the weight that was at the end. It was like these 225 pound squat cleans. And he was failing and failing and failing. And it was just like, what's happening? Why are we, why is this slipping away? And then pulled it out, finished. The next girl went and she was lightning fast and like Amanda. And then, and then we were like going, that was actually the second time, which was even crazier than the first time. Like the first time we were third as well. We're always like third, just scraping by the skin of our teeth. (laughs) And, and at that time it was like still so new and the workouts were crazy hard to us but like now people would laugh at the weights we did you know back in 2011 yeah yeah. so it's the sports come so far but then like actually walking out into the arena like it kind of felt like okay this is maybe what people feel like when they go to the olympics this world games where it's your sport and it's the, the furthest you can go you know that was a really cool feeling that's i mean yeah i mean i feel like that's like winning you know Yes. Even yes. though you haven't it was started cool. competing yet. Well, yeah. And the cool thing was in our first CrossFit Games, you didn't make it to Sunday unless you were in the top six. And we were waiting at this, like, board to just find out if we were going to make it to the top six. Yeah. And we were in sixth, made it to Sunday. Oh, yeah. yeah. And ended up fifth overall. But I remember walking out on the tennis court and waving to, like, the fans. And so many of our people from our gym had come, like, hundreds. That's and awesome. it was just like this sea of people cheering for you. It was like, oh, this is insane. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. I mean, that's like in the movie is what it's like. <laughs> yep. Yep. It was cool. I was like, those are extras. Those are real fans. <laughs> so for those of uh, the people that are out there that are interested in becoming more fit or, um, yeah, being, I don't know. Do you have any – advice or any um like your anything about your diet or eating or what do you do to be awesome in that world well one of the things I had to stop doing was like beating myself up which I think was a thing I had to learn throughout my 20s because I was really hard on myself and like would make really strict diets that I couldn't stick to Mm -hmm. and it wasn't until I found a diet that was basically like eat what you want but stop when you're full and don't eat again until you're hungry that I like started to understand my diet for me that worked best. But I say experiment with yourself is a huge thing because a lot of people do work better with something really strict. And having been a coach for eight years, I know the people that are like, okay, you need to be told to do this, 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 and that works for you. Whereas for me, it's like, no, I want to be told it's okay to eat sweets every now and then and that that's fine. And I'm not going to like, you know, go to hell for having a Snickers bar. Like, but like, that's how it used to be to myself. Like there were things that I just wouldn't allow myself to have. And I also think you just have to start. And that, and if it means you start on a Monday, like, cause everybody should start a something on a Monday, you know, like that's <laughs> fine. But you, you need to commit to like, I'm going to do this for three months. Like I would always do like a 40 day kind of challenge. Hmm. 
um, because I feel like you can really get in a good habit if you do it for 40 days. I do that with making my bed. I had to do it for 40 days, and now it's like no big deal. Five minutes, make your bed, you know, in the morning. Actually, Deepak Chopra, Deepak Chopra and Oprah are doing their 21-day meditation starting tomorrow uh, because they believe – So good. Yeah, they believe that I think it takes three weeks to break a habit or create a new one. So mm-hmm. if you're not on that, join it. It's free. And we can all be listening to the same meditation every day. That, that would actually be really cool. Really cool. Deepak is good. Right? Yeah. They're both good. Yeah. I love listening to both of them. It's so soothing on both yeah. sides. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the so- biggest thing, though, I think is consistency, too. So yeah. a lot of people get in the habit where they do it for, you know, a few days and then they break it and then that kind of thing. So I think if you can try to stay consistent, that's the key over the long term. Yeah. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I just recently changed my eating habits so that my normal, like my normal every day is super clean. And then it's okay to cheat or like, you know, to have bad stuff, but to always kind of, it made me want to come back to normal, you know, if I've had too much. And it's crazy how then if you go back to like that old way, like it almost makes you feel a little bit sick, you know? Yeah. You're like, oh, no, exactly. my body is used to these super worse. healthy things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just had to like when I- through that hard part. And then once I got past the hard part, I was like, oh, no, I can't go back and do the other. It was just like working out. Like when I first started working yeah. out, I was like, this sucks every day. But once I passed through that, now I'm like, if I don't get to the gym, I'm kind of like, oh, man, I feel bad. <laughs> I need to get I there. I literally told, yeah, I literally told a girl today. I was like, she's like, I'm worried I'm going to be sore. And I was like, you are. The first two weeks yeah. suck. They're the worst two to get through. I was like, just please promise me you'll keep coming. She's like, okay, I will. <laughs> and I was like, that's how it works. That's yeah. Cool. Okay, let's see. Henry has a question for us. If you okay. could switch bodies with anyone, who would it be and why? Ooh, that's an interesting question. Oh, man. Like, switch bodies I mean there's lots of bodies I would want but like and also like live their life and career I think that would be cool I think I would pick like um Ellen DeGeneres oh Ellen's awesome is that yours yeah I'd be on Ellen forever so much fun and everything she does every day just seems like a lot of fun all the time (laughs) Anton just modeled for their um her underwear line Oh, what? My, my, yeah, my boyfriend just modeled for their underwear line, which I thought was hilarious. And he, it got, like, Ellen underwear. I'm like, yes, that's awesome. I think yeah. I'd want to switch with, like, um, Jennifer Lawrence because her career is so crazy awesome right now. Yeah. And she's just doing, like, every cool movie with every cool person and, like, offered those scripts. And, and she just seems so down to earth at the same time, you know? Like, I'm like, gosh, that's so fun just to seem like that. I mean, who knows what she's like in real life, but hopefully super, super awesome. I think that's who I would switch with. All right. All right. Okay. So the last segment that I really wanted to touch on um, was actually Chalk It Up, the film that we did, because yeah. I don't know who's on with us, if there's any movie makers out there or artists or creatives who have tried to get their projects off the floor. And <laughs> I don't think people realize how hard it is because not only yeah. – like every step of the way there's there's challenges you know like first like getting an entire script written and then getting enough money for it to get it funded and then finding locations and then getting after insurance it. yeah Just everything there's so Titles, many color yes. correction so many there's, things you don't know go into a movie yes and so <laughs> to actually have a movie an indie movie get made is one thing that's already super tough then to have it distributed so that people can actually see it because let me tell you I have made a ton of indie <laughs> films and no one has ever seen any of them but Maddie somehow was able to get chopped it up on Netflix so you guys, yeah. you guys can see that on Netflix and not only just on Netflix it did so well on Netflix that they actually offered us uh international just distribution yep. so they so dubbed it's being it. dubbed into other languages yeah, he will be speaking German and French. <laughs> so will I. <laughs> be really cool. Yeah. Um, so check out Chalk It Up. But I, I really want to ask you, actually, you know, how did you take your 
idea and turn it into a whole thing? Like, what were some of the struggles that you went through and what, what actually made it happen? Well, like we talked about the persistence thing, this was a nine years in the making project. So I used to talk about right after we did stick it, I would do a lot of gymnastics camp appearances because of stick it. And I would always talk about stick it too, which I wanted to call stick it to you. And then <laughs> <Funny>. <laughs> Disney, of course, yeah, Disney, of course, wanted to keep the rights to stick it because it did really well. And so then I started writing this movie, Chalk It Up, because I was like, not deterred. I'll write my own gymnastics movie. Yeah. And um, so then that went through 26 drafts by the time we were at our shooting draft. Changed a lot. Changed a wow. ton. Yeah. And then we did a – we had to figure out a way to just get it made because it was like talking about it needed to stop, you know. And I was like, no one's going to just offer us the money. So we did a Kickstarter – we wanted to raise $100,000 on Kickstarter. We raised 30000 And then uh, we're very fortunate that two investors reached out. And then we went through a whole thing with drawing up the contracts and bringing in lawyers and doing the investing. And, like, that's something no one tells you about either. Like, they, I mean, how did you do that? So, so the investors reached out to you? Mm-hmm. To us through our Kickstarter. Oh, so wow. So we said if any investors are interested – and a couple people wrote us from our Kickstarter. And one of yeah. them was the, one of the gymnastics camps I'd been a part of. And um, then, yeah. And, and then another was a big gymnastics fan and his daughter is really good at gymnastics. And, and then from there, we spent, you know, almost a year in pre-production preparing to film. And then we spent only 12 days filming, which most people don't know. You obviously do. Yeah. And, uh, and flew our whole crew and cast out to Pennsylvania to film at this gymnastics camp, IGC, which is an awesome camp. Send your kids there. And, uh, and then post-production was a full year because we didn't have a lot of money. So it was favors, favors, favors. And luckily, like we've talked about that community and having friends, mm-hmm. like so many of my friends rallied to help make this project. And I think they knew how passionate I was about it and like called in so many favors and they were just awesome people helped with the trailer people helped with the color people helped with the sound and the score and gave us like awesome deals on all that so I mean I I feel like that's a really good life lesson though Mm -hmm. is is like you know you did all these appearances I I don't know for sure if you got paid for them or not but maybe Sometimes, sometimes sometimes not yeah right so you're putting yourself out there even if you aren't getting paid and you're bringing value to communities um and to people and in turn, they ended up supporting you kind of when you needed support, too. And yeah, I think that people, you know, it's very easy for people to think like, oh, crap, I need a favor. Now I'm going to, you know, ask my friends like that's a great time to do that. But they don't realize like it, it, it would be helpful if you had a bank of um, of time yes. moments when you've helped them. So, if yes, you ever have a passion to create something or, or make something happen for yourself. Like just remember, put yourself out there first and, and be there for your friends and offer to help them on their projects and see how you can help them or connect them to people, but be a value to them first. And then when it comes time for you to need something, it's much easier to be like, Hey, would you be able to help now? You know, that is the best lesson I've ever learned. Like there's so many times now that I'm like, oh, I will help this person. I will do that for this person. And like, it's funny because you feel like you've just like exhausted all your favors too. And so many friends, you're just like, I don't even want to call them. I feel so guilty, but people are awesome too and respect that. And you just have to show a lot of gratitude too, which I'm so grateful for every single person that helped with Chalk It Up. And now I try to get them jobs. So like the guy that did our score, it's great Mm -hmm. because I can recommend him to other people to do the score, you know, things like that. Okay, so I know we're running short on time, so I just want to do, like, some quick questions. Um, okay. So, okay. So I want you to tell Hopefully me. I'll have quick answers. What is your most used or, like, favorite possessions and things for these categories of things, okay? So, like, okay. What, is your, what is your favorite or most used possession for getting your day started? Getting my day started... Like, do you have like a favorite song or do you drink coffee or do you? Oh, that's a, 
that's exactly it. I'm a crazy mocha latte person. Mocha latte. Crazy. To the point where I gave it up for Lent because I was getting so crazy about it. <laughs> okay, what about your favorite possession for working out? For working out would have to be all my, like, Lulu clothes. Uh -huh. I'm obsessed with them, and I always want more, but they're expensive, so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would probably say my Waddies. I use those a lot, and I feel like they Oh, and my, my yeah. nub. Ah, uh, yeah, for Do your you thumb. Do you have the nubs from Waddies? No, I, I don't use them. It doesn't actually hurt my thumb because I can't really hook grip very well because we do the ones oh. at the gym, and so the bars are thicker, and I can't really do it anyways. Got but it. I, I use my nub. The I three things that. I take on every vacation is my unbroken design weight belt. I use my jump ropes, like either from RPM or RX Smart Gear, and my nubs. Every vacation, I bring that with me. That's actually, yeah. I mean, they're nice and concise, but you can, like, work mm -hmm. out more with them. And then you have all the tools you need at any CrossFit gym you go to. True. This is true. Okay. Uh, what about workout recovery? Workout recovery... I have a Mark Pro, which is really helpful. And then my friend Izzy, I get massages from him um, like probably twice a month. I, during the open, I was getting them every week, but I always get massages. I swear by him. And Izzy's freaking awesome. So Israel Wright, if you need to contact him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what about for being productive? Being productive. Um, I have my friend Brooke. She helps me be accountable. We call each other every day. We pray on the phone every day. And oh. if it wasn't for her, I would not get done nearly as much as I get done for sure. Right. And I also, yeah. And then also I'm part of an acting group called Actor Salon, which helps me stay accountable to my acting. Because sometimes it can be so discouraging because your agents aren't getting you auditions, but really you have to do the work, you know, which is fine. All right. I'm making a note. Accountability partners. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, love I like this one. Okay, what about an energy pick me up? Um I mean I love bars. I carry way too many in my purse. And so I like, like one bars and balance cool. bars. Yeah. Balance. Not quest. Um balance bar is one of my favorite. The one bar, have you had that? There's this new one, <laughs> Visia, that I'm in love with. Um but I feel like those are just like really easy and they're just always in your purse yeah so right. simple uh what about i also energy? will walk pepper which is a great energy pick me up uh, because pepper. pepper doesn't love walks so it's sort of funny because it's this game of we're both trying to get each other moving you know so we're like <laughs> let's move and she's just like a little curmudgeon she's like why are you making me walk so yeah <laughs> okay um what about relaxing or going to sleep? One of, one of them. I love TV. So TV or reading. Like I said, I'm in this book club. And so I love to read until I fall asleep. And I love TV, like Modern Family, Pretty Little Liars. I just watched all Big Little Lies. Like, Ooh, and I, I think it's important for our career to love TV and to watch it. So I don't feel guilty watching TV either. <laughs> awesome. Uh, do you have any routines in your life that that you really, like, swear by? Um, I mean, definitely my working out routine. Yeah. And also uh, praying, like I've talked about. That's a big routine for me. And I like to hike a lot. Me and my friend Molly meet up probably two to three times a week to hike. But I think it's just nice to be able to talk with someone. And she's an entrepreneur starting a, a hair extension business. So it's nice because we both have big dreams and it's, it's fun to check in all the time and like keep encouraging one another. I agree. Back okay. to the accountability, right, partners. accountability partners. <laughs> all right. So what, what are some, um, some like links or handles or anything where people can find you or where would you like me to send them to? I'm best on Instagram at Maddie Curley. That's where I post all my pictures and I just link them to Facebook and Twitter, but I don't really check my Facebook or Twitter. So I yeah, IG, yeah. And even if people direct message me, I'm usually pretty good about answering everybody. And I read every comment, no matter what. I love comments. So even Aww, if I don't respond awesome. to the comment, it will be read. I assure you. So, and do you have any upcoming projects or things you would like to talk about or share with us? Yeah. Our, 
our TV show Division One just won the Fresh Voices pilot contest, and oh, so cool! Yeah, and it's going to be featured on this thing called the Blacklist, which I don't know if you guys have heard of the Blacklist, but Blacklist is where like unknown writers a lot of times get discovered. Like Snow White and the Huntsman was a Blacklist writer, and um, so we're going to be one of the featured films coming up in the next few months. Uh, our TV shows. And they're going to make us a poster and everything. And then I'm also working on a Christmas movie called Christmas on Fire about a female yeah. firefighter. And it's very Hallmarky and a love story. So I like that. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending yeah. time with us and for answering all these cool questions. And thank you, everybody who's <laughs> online with Shannon. us saying really really cool things and just joining us for an awesome conversation. Yay. Thank you guys. All Thanks right. Katie. Well, we're signing off, but everyone have a good Sunday and a great rest of your week. Yay. Bye. All right. Bye guys.